In this video, we are going to take a look at a couple of ways to repair a damaged cantilevered balcony floor joist. And I will leave it up to you to figure out if this is going to work for you and how many of these floor joists you could fix if they were damaged using these methods. And the first method I would suggest would be to cut a new board and bolt it to the existing one. And in this example here, we have 16 inch on centered bolts and they are staggered. And we are using 3 8 of an inch diameter bolts for this example. Now I want to point out that the rotted area should probably be cut away and removed and then you could just install a new piece there and you could always bolt it to the new board or use screws and nails and keep in mind that this board right here, the new one, is going to be the main support and this one right here is just going to be for decoration. So keep that in mind when you are doing this type of repair. So this is the first method probably going to be the easiest method. However, here is another method that might work. And in this example here, we're going to use a scarf joint. And I'm not going to go into a lot of details on the variety of different joints you can use. However, I am going to tell you that something like this could pull apart. So if you could imagine having some type of pressure here this could be the pivot point and this could actually pull forward and then drop down and the key here is that you want to prevent this from moving forward and i believe you can do that with the plywood sheathing however i don't think you could do it with decking if you have two by six decking probably not going to happen and you will need to use a additional structural support like straps. And I don't think you need to be a rogue scholar to figure out that this method here is not going to be as easy as the first one. However, this method right here might look a little bit better from the bottom. And if you only have one joist that is damaged, you might be able to get away with it. And keep in mind that with the damage here, you won't need to replace the entire rim joist because the main structural support is going to be from the cantilever joist. And let's not forget that this repair here is an alternative to removing and replacing the entire joist. And that's what you might need to do if you have a lot of damage or multiple joists that are going to be damaged that wouldn't allow you to use any of the repair methods in this video. And another thing I want to point out is that the break in the plywood probably shouldn't be within two feet of our break in the joist where we are going to be installing our scarf joint. So something like this where we're using a full sheet here and then our smaller pieces here is going to provide us a little more structural support. For example, if we use the plywood sheathing in the same way that we use a strap, we could put nails on each side of the break to connect everything together and prevent it from coming apart. So if we had a break in the plywood anywhere in this area here, then we would simply be nailing one side of the plywood and the other side of the plywood, and we wouldn't be getting any structural support where we're going to get the structural support here because we're using a solid piece of lumber. And if this was enough to prevent the new piece from moving forward and falling down, then we would have a nice solid repair. However, if that does not make sense, maybe this will, and that would be to install a strap on the top. And let's not forget that you could always use longer straps along with using a strap long enough to connect the top of the existing joist and wrap it all the way around the front of the rim and then go underneath the joist and go back about two feet away from the brake on the bottom and the top to prevent this from moving. And if you're looking for a little more support, you could always add a strap to each side. 
However, I think something like this might be a little bit overkill. You can always get rid of the one on the top and just use the ones on the sides. And if you don't like that idea, you could always use a bolt or an all thread. And in our example here, we might be using something about 3 8 of an inch in diameter. And you would simply countersink a hole here and then drill a hole all the way through both pieces of lumber and then installing a nut and a washer on the bottom to prevent this board from moving forward and ruining your repair. And for whatever reason, if any of this stuff does not make any sense, then definitely don't use it. Contact a structural engineer or a local contractor or building authority in your area for additional information.